Today on Nerd Out, we're talking about transactions. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about transactions on the Cardano blockchain and kind of what's inside, what's the guts. And so without further ado, let's jump into it. So transactions, what are they? They are instructions for modifying the ledger state so that everybody agrees on who has what tokens, what ADA, etc. Uh, they can spend UTXOs. Remember from previous videos, UTXOs are the actual amounts of things that sit underneath your ad addresses. They can also contain certificates like a stake pool registration or other type of certificates like a delegation certificate, like I'm delegating to the stake pool. Uh, they can also contain metadata, all those cool tokens and everything you see on various websites with their pictures and everything, that's all stored as metadata on the blockchain. They can also mint and burn tokens. They can contain scripts, either native scripts or smart contracts. Uh, native scripts is just uh, one way that we get things like native assets. And there's probably some other stuff I don't know about yet, but you know I'm still learning along with you guys. So We'll talk about what we know about today, and maybe if I learn more, there will be a future video. So, uh, the main thing we want to talk about is kind of what's inside these and how transaction signing works. So, the first thing you do is you build an unsigned transaction. This is just, I want to modify the ledger state to move this thing to this, this new state. Um, and all of those rules and everything, that's all encoded into... CBOR, which is a very com compact, I think it stands for compact binary object representation. It's kind of like JSON, except it's it's binary. Um, another similar protocol would be like protocol buffers or something like that. But this is uh, very comp compact. It's used on the Cardano blockchain a lot to compress data or, or represent it as small as possible. So if we decode this, what does that unsigned transaction look like? Well, it looks like a, a couple things. It's a map. It starts off with a map and this is the main transaction body and then it has some other stuff. Um, in this particular one this transaction is minting a token and so if we we get into the guts of it zero um, so a, a map is just a key value pair so the number is the key and then whatever's behind it is the value so we have the value zero, anything behind zero is our UTXOs in. So this is a UTXO and an index. So this is a previous transaction and an index in that transaction to some unspent ADA. And that ADA was sitting on this particular address, uh, which starts, it's an enterprise address, so it starts with 60 and it's on testnet, so it's zero instead of 61. And then this is the change we're returning. So anything that's out is in under one. So we have this one that's simply returning the change for ADA. So this guy's paying the transaction fee essentially. And then uh, there's another UTXO out address. This is where we want our token to land once it's minted. And so we have to send some ADA to it. But then you also see it's got this other map inside of it that has a policy, policy ID, and then inside of that policy ID, there's another map, and that is the actual token name, and then to the amount of that token. And so this is an NFT, so there's non-fungible. It's always going to be a single token we're going to mint here. And then under two, that's our transaction fee we want to pay. Under three, that is our slot number that we want this transaction to live for. Like if it's not put into a block and we pass this slot number, then it'll throw that transaction out of the, the mempool. And then under nine, we have our, our policy, our script policy. And so this is our policy ID and again, our name and our number to mint. So this transaction is going to mint some mint a token. And then we have our script key hash down here, which is our um, 
script information for that, that token. And then we also have the final item in this array of the transaction is a null value, and that's because we're currently doing no metadata. So if we had metadata, it would be down here. Um, we're not going to actually do an image or anything for this NFT. It's just going to be a simple token. Maybe it represents a concert ticket or something that doesn't really need a picture. So what does a signed transaction look like? Again, it looks like a giant blob of, of CBOR binary garbage, but let's look inside of it. So this is after we've signed it with our private key along with our uh, native asset private key. And so if we dig into the guts of it, we again have this whole first part looks identical. Um, and the reason for that is there's, we, we keep the signatures separate from the actual transaction body. So this first part here, that's the transaction body. And then everything else is kind of metadata or other stuff about the transaction that kind of goes along with it. And so you see under zero, this is where all of our signatures go. So this proves that we're allowed to spend the ADA in these, in this uh, UTXO up here, or we're allowed to mint this particular uh, token because of our, our policy secret key. So we've got two signatures on this. We have the first one is our token policy, and this is the one we'll pay attention to. And you see uh, this first line, this is the public key. So we include the public key of our token policy along with the transaction. And then we have our signature. This takes the transaction body, signs it with our private key, which is the S key. And then we get the signature. And using that signature, somebody can take these two pieces of information and validate that, yes, we are allowed to create that token. And then the other is a signature just for our payment key that says we're allowed to spend this ADA and pay the transaction fees and everything like that. So how does the signature actually get created? I created some sample code here. Let's take a look at that. So we have again our, our body coming in. This is our unsigned body. And what I'm attempting to do here is match up that, that value, that signature we saw over here, the 8886F1. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing in this test is I've got, here's what I expect it to equal when I'm all said and done signing this transaction. So I pull in the raw unsigned CBOR and I'm taking just that first element out of it, which is that, that full transaction body, everything inside the body. And then I am building my secret key and in the library I'm using, it expects the secret key to be a combination of both the S key and the V key. I believe if you're signing with Cardano CLI or something else, it will do this kind of internally or it'll build the V key from the S key. It doesn't need both. But for LibSodium, it does, does require both of them when you sign. And then I am taking a Blake 2B hash of the transaction. So we don't sign the actual transaction itself. We sign a hash of the transaction. And so I'm signing it detached, which means I'm not going to mash all the data together. I want the signature to be a separate thing. And then I'm checking the signature by converting it to hex and comparing it to what I saw in the CBOR. And of course, that matches. And that is how transactions and transaction signing works. And if, you know, your node looked inside of a block and saw one of these transaction signatures, it would kind of run through a similar process to validate that that transaction was valid and allowed to be spent or create those tokens, etc. And with that, nerd out.